What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, aka this Wolf Fester here to educate you on health, fitness, and social well-being. And today guys, we're going to be talking about metabolic fatigue. I'm going to be debunking a lot of myths about metabolic fatigue, explain what metabolic fatigue actually is, and how this all kind of works in with, you know, strength, hypertrophy, mechanical tension, all that. So, here's the thing guys, after you've watched this video, if you have certain questions, before you ask those questions, please, please, I'm begging you, please, in the description down below, watch my videos. If you have not, make sure you watch my videos over the connection between strength and hypertrophy, my video over how you cannot completely disconnect myofibular and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, my video over concentric and eccentric reps, and my recent, more recent video that I did over talking, you know, full range of motion, mechanical tension, and constant tension. Please check those out because all of this connects, it all goes hand in hand, and hopefully by the end of this video, you guys have a much better understanding of how this all works in terms of muscle growth, why a lot of these like, Pro science techniques like um, constant tension and like slowing your reps down, just exaggeratingly slowing your eccentrics and even slowing your concentric reps, why all of that doesn't work well for naturals, why it's not effective, and how all this just pretty much goes hand in hand. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you guys have to understand is that the two main ways, the really primary, really like the only two ways that we really know how to build muscle as of right now is mechanical tension and metabolic fatigue. A lot of people like to throw in muscle damage as the third one, but that's stupid because muscle damage and metabolic fatigue are literally the same thing. Like, there is no separation. The only people that teach like muscle damage as the third one are people who don't really understand the science behind it or they've just heard a bunch of bros be like, yeah, you know, we, we tear our muscle fibers down a lot and they build back up stronger, things like that, right? So here's the thing. Brief overview, you guys should already pretty much know what mechanical tension is right now. That's where the whole time under tension comes from. And in the misconstrued version, constant tension comes from. Mechanical tension pretty much just refers to the amount of weight you have on the bar. You increase mechanical tension pretty much only one of two ways, by increasing the amount of weight you're lifting or by increasing the range of motion. So if you go from like a normal grip bench to a close grip bench with the same amount of weight, you've technically increased mechanical tension. And if you know you just add weight to the bar, you've increased mechanical tension. Why? Because all mechanical tension is, is the amount of tension placed on our muscles in a given range of motion. So, um, for example, if you if you bench press, right, and you come all the way down to your chest and all the way up, then that is mechanical tension. You've done everything you can with mechanical tension with that given weight for however many sets and rests because you come all the way down, all the way up, you put your muscles through the full range of motion with that given tension. Whereas if you only come halfway down and you don't touch your chest, you haven't done um, as much mechanical tension as possible. Why? Well, because you didn't do as much workload you only went halfway down so there wasn't as much tension on the muscle throughout the entire thing now that's where the whole oh well, no i i didn't touch my chest or you know for constant tension like i said you guys if you watch that video you understand like what's wrong with that thinking but we're going to get into that so that's pretty much like how mechanical tension works right yes you add weight to the bar it's more mechanical tension two sets of 10 with 225 pounds is more mechanical tension than sets of 10 with 200 pounds right okay metabolic fatigue guys simply put is our body's response to our total workload and the way it works isn't through like you know like oh our muscles like physically tear down and then build back up no it's it's um it's metabolic in nature that's why it's metabolic fatigue right the way it works is that the protein bonds in our muscles are broken down then they have to build back up stronger why so that way our bodies can handle the same workload which is why we have to what progressively overload in order to keep getting bigger and stronger because why well our muscles when they build back up they're used to this workload that we've used so after three weeks due to the biological law of accommodation our muscles are fully adapted to that workload so something has to change you have to increase your reps increase your sets increase your weight or provide a new stimulus through a different movement that's how that works right and we already have talked about like the importance of consistency for progressive overload which is why you don't want to be switching movements just needlessly unless you're going through a certain type of cycle where you know why you're doing that right okay so since we understand hopefully so here's the main thing metabolic fatigue since we understand that is caused from total workload that's the most important fact of this video metabolic fatigue comes from total workload our total volume volume being what guys we've gone over this so many times sets times your reps times your weight that is the total volume and we how do we grow by gradually over time increasing that weekly volume we're getting stronger we're either adding weight or sets or reps right we understand all that okay so here's where a lot of these myths kind of don't make sense so one thing you'll hear when people talk about metabolic fatigue is like oh it's all about like just getting a really good pump well first of all there is literally like been no scientific evidence to show that better pumps lead to more muscle growth. Yes, better pumps make us feel good. We look good, we look jacked because we're getting a lot of blood flow, but 
there's no research or evidence to show that you like a pump is even like necessary or required for more muscle growth. Now it's not to say, it's not to say that um it's not to say that like, you know, if you're not if you're not getting any type of pump, then you know there might be something off with your blood work. But the point is I can do lots of things that will give me like a really crazy pump, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm doing enough workload to stimulate muscle growth, right? Like if I do a hundred push-ups right now, I'm gonna get a sick pump from that, right? But that's not as much total workload as if I do like, you know, five sets of 10 with 225 pounds. So we, we have to think about that, right? We have to think about that as in terms of like, you know, and of course it depends on what you weigh, but the point is a pump doesn't necessarily mean that you've done enough workload to cause sufficient metabolic fatigue to cause growth. So people say like, oh, it's all about the pump. People say things like, oh, if you want to induce metabolic fatigue, you got to have a short rest time. People say, hey, if you're trying to do some metabolic fatigue, you gotta do really slow reps, slow eccentric, slow concentric, right? Okay, let's address all these points and hopefully you guys will understand why that's stupid, why it's counterproductive. Keeping in mind, metabolic fatigue, total workload, they go hand in hand. If you increase your total workload, more total workload, more volume, more sets times reps times weight through proper range of motion equals more metabolic fatigue, right? All right, well, let's look at this. If my goal is, hey, I'm trying to get a better pump, so I'm going to decrease my rest time so that I keep my pump, so I keep tension on the muscles, that's counterproductive to metabolic fatigue. Why? Okay. If metabolic fatigue comes from workload, which is sets times reps times weight, but I'm only resting 30 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half between sets, and as the weight gets heavy, it gets to the point where I'm like, hmm, because I'm resting such little time, I either have to decrease the weight on my, you know, set all my sets after my first. Why? Because I'm not able to get, let's say I'm trying to do three sets of eight. I can't do three sets of eight if I'm only resting, you know, 30 seconds, minute, minute and a half, because the weight's now so heavy to where I can't get sets of eight with that if I'm only resting a minute and a half. So what do I do? Hmm, I drop the weight. Or, or I simply keep the same weight, but I get less reps. Well, what's the problem with that, guys? Well, if we drop the weight, we one are reducing mechanical tension, which is one of the big factors for muscle growth, right? But we're also reducing our total workload. Why? Because three sets of eight with 200 pounds is less workload than three sets of eight with 225 pounds. Therefore, I've reduced the total workload. I reduced the total metabolic fatigue that I'm actually creating. Well, I maybe have a better pump because I, you know, kept going with short rest times. Am I keeping quote unquote constant tension on the muscles? Yes, but once again, no sufficient evidence or research to show that this constant tension is going to keep is going to add additional muscle growth or even cause muscle growth. There's no evidence on that. Total workload causes muscle growth. Metabolic fatigue causes muscle growth. Mechanical tension causes muscle growth. But resting such a short time where I have to either decrease the reps or the weight goes against all of that. And it's so funny because people are so quick whenever I talk about this stuff, and I've mentioned this in videos before kind of briefly, they're so quick to be like, no, constant tension does help with muscle growth. Like, and, and the only argument they have other than so-and-so says this is that, well, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld talks about um, metabolic fatigue and, you know, constant tension has to do with metabolic fatigue. No, it doesn't. Show me where he said that constant tension has to do with metabolic fatigue. And it's so funny because Dr. Brad Schoenfeld is the one who's coming out with the research showing that longer rest time leads to more hypertrophy. Why? Because if you're resting for longer, you're gonna be able to get all your prescribed sets and reps with the same weight. You're not gonna have to decrease reps, you're not gonna have to decrease weight, which means you have done more total workload. So it's much better, not just for strength, we're not even talking about strength right now, but we're talking specifically for muscle hypertrophy. It makes way more sense to take a little bit longer rest if you need to, so you can complete all your sets and reps with the prescribed weight than to, oh, I'm gonna get like really short rest and get a nice pump, but I'm gonna have to decrease the weight and decrease the reps, which decreases total workload, which means less metabolic fatigue. You may feel like you're doing more because you're tiring stuff out more, but you're not actually making your muscles do more work. Your muscles have done less total work. They just did that less work in a shorter time frame. Where is the benefit? Where does the metabolic fatigue come in? All right, next point. Let's talk about the whole um, concentric and eccentric. Like, oh, if you're trying to induce metabolic fatigue, you want like really, really slow eccentrics and slow key centric and concentric reps as well. You want like just really slow reps all the way throughout because you're making your muscles do more total work. No, that's not how that works. Why? Okay, if you guys checked out my video over concentric and eccentric reps, what's two things we talked about? One, there is zero benefit to doing concentric reps slowly from the standpoint of hypertrophy. I'll get into performance stuff a little bit later, but from the standpoint of hypertrophy, there is no benefit in doing that. Why? Because if let's use, let's use let's use bench press again if i'm exploding off my chest right or even squats when i'm exploding out of the hole right it takes more muscle fiber recruitment 
for me to be explosive off of my chest or explosive out of the hole than if I go slow, right? So by going faster, I'm getting more total muscle fiber recruitment. By going faster, I'm gonna be able to use more weight because if I try to do 225 fast off my chest, that's gonna move a lot better. I'm gonna be able to complete that rep more so than if I try to do it really slowly, right? Okay, so because there's more total muscle fiber recruitment, and that's gonna help us with muscle growth, why would you ever do a concentric rep slowly? That doesn't make any sense. That's completely counterproductive. Now let's talk about the eccentric rep. Is there benefits to controlling the eccentric? Yes, that is without discussion, without debate, undeniable. We have overwhelming amounts of research, facts, and evidence to support that. That That's the whole point about, hey, if you do concentric and eccentric, that's what? More total workload because it's more actual time under tension. Why? Because you're going, instead of doing concentrics where you go up and then you just don't control and then you go up, you're going up and down, up and down. It's more time under tension through a full range of motion because you're going up and down, right? So yes, there is benefits to controlling the eccentric. However, as I stated in that video, there is no difference in terms of hypertrophy between a, like two to three second control eccentric and a four to six second control eccentric. There's no difference in the muscle mass you will build. So my question is this, guys. Why would you, instead of just doing like the two to three second control eccentric for the standpoint of hypertrophy, why would you slow it down to like four to six seconds? eight to 10 seconds. Why would you do that when by slowing the reps down that much, you're one, not gonna be able to do as much weight, or two, you're not gonna be able to get as much reps. Why? Because you're gonna tie yourself out. It's a lot easier to do three sets of 10 with any given weight with a normal control eccentric and exploding back up than it is if I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. What are you doing? You're stopping the total reps you can do and you're stopping the total amount of weight you can use, which once again, what? Decreases mechanical tension and what we're talking about in this video, decreases your metabolic fatigue. Why? Because you've decreased the total volume, the total workload. So what sense does that make? Why would you do that? If we're trying to induce metabolic fatigue, which we get from total workload, why would you use a technique that's gonna stop the total workload you can use? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Same thing if we just look at specifically not even just talking about the rest time, we talk about the constant tension thing, like in that video over constant tension range of motion, I talked about why it's stupid to, instead of going through a full range of motion with a shoulder press, so you can get the most total workload on all the muscles involved, including like some upper chest action, you want to stop what halfway here, while well, I'm keeping constant tension on the on the the, the, uh, the lateral head of the delt, okay, but once again, why? There is no proof or evidence that that constant tension is gonna help with muscle growth. Two, it is a compound movement. The point of compound movement is to work all the muscle groups involved. Three, it's less total workload because you're not gonna be able to do as much reps or as much weight. So once again, you're stopping the total workload, which is stopping metabolic fatigue, which is gonna hinder your muscle growth. But no, you're doing this because in your mind, this constant tension is metabolic fatigue, even though no, exercise physiologist anywhere is going to pull up a book and actually be like, oh yeah, that's how that works. No, it's bro science. It's bro science has been repeated so much, even by people who do have pretty good backgrounds to where it's like people just take it as truth because it sounds good or because it makes sense. Or so I can sell you this special program with these special training techniques. But that doesn't make any sense, guys. Metabolic fatigue comes from total workload. If you're going through a full range of motion and you're using, and you know, you have a certain amount of sets and reps and weight, and you were able to gradually increase that in some form or another, whether it's through sets, reps, or weight, while still maintaining a full range of motion and able to properly recover from it, then that is everything you need to do for metabolic fatigue. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, Marcellus, I've seen you do tempo reps on bench press. Yes, I'm not doing that for the sake of hypertrophy, though. And even with that, it's not over-exaggerated. It's like three-second counts going down. The purpose of that, guys, is for me to work on more control with the eccentric when I have heavier weight, because as the weight gets heavier on bench press, for powerlifting, it can get to a point where I can't control it as efficiently as I want. And if I can't control it as efficiently as I want, that's gonna take away from my overall power. It's better for me to be nice and controlled, keep my tightness, and be able to explode my chest than to just drop it on my chest, lose all my tightness, flatten up, and not be able to press it strong. It's for performance, not hypertrophy. That's what you guys have to understand. You have to understand what a certain technique does and what the actual purpose of it is for. Now, some of you may also may be wondering, well, what about soreness? Like when I do really, really slow eccentrics, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I get more sore and stuff like that. Like, and that's the thing, we know that eccentrics do make us more sore. Why? Because we're just doing more total workload and because of like the stretch on the muscle and stuff like that. Yeah, so that is gonna make you a little bit more sore. But when you start exaggerating the eccentric beyond that, a lot of that soreness you're feeling is your connective tissue because you have such a huge workload and you're just going so slow. It's not just your muscles. You have to think about all your connective tissue. You have to think about your tendons, your joints, all of that that gets involved in the movements, guys. Like, it blows my mind how 
If people understand progressive overload, if people understand total workload, if they understand what metabolic fatigue actually is and mechanical tension, how all that stuff actually is, they understand that, but then it's almost like they completely disregard it for these things like um, ex really slow reps, constant tension, short rest time, these things that we've already proven that Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who's literally like basically the lead in hypertrophy, like, you know, studies right along with like, you know, Dr. Mike Isertel, have shown this doesn't do anything for you. Or they'll misquote them. Oh, well, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld says metabolic fatigue is important. Yes. And how do you increase metabolic fatigue? By increasing workload. That's why longer rest times are better than shorter rest times. If you can rest, like, you know, rest as long as you need to to complete the sets and reps. If you only need a minute and a half to get all three sets of 10 with a given weight, fine. But if you find that that's not enough rest time as the weight gets heavier, increase your rest time. It's that simple, guys. It's that easy. And what you guys have to really get to the point of understanding, guys, is you have to think critically about this stuff. If you understand a certain principle and understand that that is a fact, and something else comes along that goes against that, well, then something's wrong. Facts don't negate facts, guys. Facts work together hand in hand. So if you have one fact negating another, well, then one of those things is in a fact. Something's off, something's wrong. So you guys have to just keep that in mind whenever you're talking about metabolic fatigue, when you're talking about um, anything, anything related to health and fitness, guys. That's, that's the thing you have to understand. So I hope I made all that clear. I'm pretty sure I addressed everything. If, if you guys have any questions, please watch all of those videos first. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe, keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.